Welcome back to Compelling History. Today we embark on the third episode of our four-part series on the airline which defined the air travel industry. We'll look at the image Pan Am built for itself and explore areas of Pan Am's history not strictly related to routes or aircraft. Before we travel back to the golden age of flight, make sure you like and subscribe if you enjoy our content. Or if you hate what modern airlines have become, you can give this video a protest like and subscription. Part 1. Passenger Experience One of the most recognizable aspects of Pan Am's fleet was its striking aircraft liveries. From the early days of aviation to its peak in the mid-20th century, Pan Am's livery underwent several transformations, each reflecting the airline's image and era. In its infancy, Pan Am's planes sported a simple but elegant blue and silver livery, symbolizing reliability and professionalism. However, as air travel became more glamorous with the dawn of the jet age, Pan Am would introduce the iconic billboard livery featuring the bold blue globe motif against a white background, evoking a sense of global connectivity and adventure. This livery became synonymous with the later years of Pan Am and remained a hallmark of the airline until its demise. During the immediate post-war era, Pan Am experienced significant growth expanding its reach and landplane fleet with large numbers of Douglas C-54s, Lockheed Constellations, and Boeing 377 Stratocruisers. Around 1950, Pan Am adopted a white crown to the livery, with a larger PAA logo on the tail, marking the introduction of the first scheme for aircraft like the DC-6 and DC-7C. However, as the jet age approached, Pan Am sought a new livery. The resulting design, although classic, was hardly radical. The cheat line was simplified to a thin blue line, and the titles were changed to Pan American in black. With the introduction of the iconic globe logo designed by Edward Larrabee Barnes and Charles Forberg, the introduction of jet clippers brought forth a new era for Pan Am, with the livery extending not only to the jets, but also to aircraft like the DC-4, DC-6, and even some DC-3. Notably, Pan Am's commitment to luxury extended beyond the exterior to its interior configurations and accommodations, which set a standard for comfort and elegance in air travel. Pan Am stewardesses played a central role in shaping the passenger experience, embodying the airline's image of glamour and sophistication. Initially known as Sky Girls or Pan Am Girls, stewardesses were required to meet strict physical and grooming standards. However, as societal norms evolved, so did their responsibilities, with Pan Am stewardesses becoming synonymous with elegance and professionalism. Selected for their poise and language skills, their employee training largely consisted of anticipating passengers' needs and creating a luxurious environment on board. Part 2. Brand and Marketing Pan Am's advertising campaigns were masterpieces of their time, designed to evoke a sense of luxury, adventure, and global connectivity. Through print media, television commercials, and billboards, Pan Am portrayed itself as the epitome of sophistication and glamour in air travel. These ads often featured elegant travelers enjoying gourmet meals and impeccable service aboard Pan Am's spacious cabins. By associating itself with the lifestyle of the affluent and adventurous, Pan Am attracted a loyal following of high-end clientele. Moreover, Pan Am leveraged its extensive route network to showcase exotic destinations around the world. Advertisements depicted iconic landmarks such as the Eiffel Tower in Paris, the Taj Mahal in India, and the Great Wall of China, enticing travelers with the promise of unforgettable experiences. These posters were displayed in department and specialty store displays or along the walls of travel agencies, the preferred method of booking travel during the 1950s. While these posters were only a small part of Pan Am's overall marketing strategy, they played a significant role in making the airline stand out amongst the growing competition on international routes since the company lost its almost monopoly following the Second World War. Airlines during the 1950s mainly focused their marketing budgets on newspaper and magazine advertisements to reach the widest audience. Pan Am's main appeal probably lies in its reproduction of posters, timetables, brochures, and magazine advertisements that sold commercial air travel and vacations in faraway places to adventure-seeking Americans. To persuade American vacation seekers to travel internationally, Many Pan Am publications sought to educate them about the history and cultural norms of destinations outside the United States. 
Even if consumers could not afford such leisure, the airline's advertising promoted appealing fantasies through a multicolor vision of foreign lands and American technological supremacy. Pan Am was renowned for its pioneering spirit in opening up new travel routes, particularly on a promotional basis. The airline's round-the-world flights became legendary, allowing passengers to circumnavigate the globe in unparalleled comfort and style. These promotional routes not only offered convenience, but also symbolized Pan Am's commitment to connecting people across continents. One of the most iconic promotional routes was the inaugural flight of the Boeing 747, known as the first Jumbo Jet in 1970. Pan Am transformed air travel with this revolutionary aircraft, offering unprecedented levels of comfort and capacity. The airline's promotional efforts around the Boeing 747 further solidified its reputation as an industry leader and innovator. Pan Am's influence extended beyond the realm of aviation, permeating popular culture in various forms. The airline became synonymous with elegance and adventure, appearing in literature, films, and television shows as a symbol of sophistication and global travel. In literature, authors often referenced Pan Am as the preferred carrier of jet-setting characters embarking on exotic adventures. Films such as Catch Me If You Can and The Aviator prominently featured Pan Am, showcasing its glamorous image and pivotal role in aviation history. Moreover, Pan Am's distinctive logo and livery adorned countless merchandise items, from travel posters to luggage tags, becoming cherished collector's items for aviation enthusiasts. Pan Am's branding and marketing strategies were instrumental in shaping its identity as the world's premier airline. Through captivating advertisements, innovative promotional routes, and pervasive presence in popular culture, Pan Am cultivated an image of luxury, adventure, and global connectivity. Part 3. Architecture During its early years, Pan Am recognized the importance of having a flagship hub that embodied its vision of international air travel. The International Pan American Airport in Miami, opened in 1928, served as a gateway to the Americas and beyond. Designed by Delano and Aldrich, the airport's architecture reflected Pan Am's ambition to connect the world through air travel. With its grand terminal building and sweeping curves, it evoked a sense of modernity and sophistication, setting the stage for travelers embarking on transcontinental journeys. Beyond its aesthetic appeal, the International Pan American Airport was strategically positioned to facilitate Pan Am's expanding network of routes. Its location in Miami, a burgeoning hub of trade and tourism, allowed for seamless connections between North and South America, Europe, and the Caribbean. The airport became synonymous with Pan Am's global presence, symbolizing the airline's role as a pioneer in international air travel. In the 1950s, Pan Am unveiled plans for another architectural masterpiece, the Worldport Terminal at Idlewild Airport in New York, renamed to John F. Kennedy International Airport in December of 1963. Originally known as the Pan Am Terminal, it was designed by Ives Terreno and Gardner Associated Architects and Walther Prokosh of Tippett's Abbott McCarthy Stratton to showcase international jet travel. The terminal gained fame for its four-acre flying saucer roof, supported on 32 sets of pre-stressed horizontal steel posts and cables. This innovative design allowed aircraft to be parked under the overhanging roof, effectively bringing the plane to the passenger and sheltering them as they boarded. In 1971, the terminal was expanded to accommodate the large Boeing 747 and renamed the Pan Am Worldport, solidifying its status as the world's largest airline terminal. The Worldport Terminal was more than just a symbol of modernity. It was a feat of engineering that revolutionized airport design. Its circular layout allowed for efficient aircraft movements and streamlined passenger flow, setting new standards for airport functionality. As Pan Am expanded its operations, it sought to establish a prominent presence in the heart of Manhattan. The Pan Am Building, completed in 1963, emerged as a vertical landmark that epitomized the airline's stature and influence. Designed by Emery Roth & Sons, the building's sleek modernist design dominated the New York skyline, serving as a beacon of corporate power and prestige. Pan Am founder Juan Tripp signed a 25-year lease for 613,000 square feet across 15 floors of the Pan Am building, solidifying the airline's headquarters in the iconic structure for years to come. Originally envisioned with signs bearing the company's name or logo on all eight facades, the building's exterior was eventually adorned with Pan Am signage on the four major facades. 
The as yet incomplete Pan Am building was formally opened on March 7, 1963, becoming the largest commercial office development in the world by square footage upon completion. However, Pan Am's ownership of the building faced challenges in later years. Despite acquiring full ownership of the property in 1978, the airline encountered financial difficulties due to high fuel costs and a lack of income from airfare. Amid these challenges, Pan Am decided in April 1980 to sell the building, marking the end of an era for its presence in the iconic structure. Conclusion Pan Am transcended the realm of aviation to become a cultural icon synonymous with luxury, adventure, and global connectivity. As we conclude our exploration of Pan Am's iconic past, we are reminded of the profound impact that the airline had on shaping the future of aviation and global connectivity. Pan Am's legacy lives on in the collective memory of those who experienced its unparalleled service and in the enduring influence it has exerted on the aviation industry. Though Pan Am may no longer grace the skies, its spirit continues to soar, inspiring us to reach new heights of innovation, elegance, and global connection in the world of aviation and beyond. In the next video, we'll explore why Pan Am no longer operates and close out our series on the Pan American Airways. Thank you so much for watching the third episode of Compelling History series on Pan Am. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe to help the channel grow. I would also like to thank everyone who provided feedback on my previous videos and encourage you to share your thoughts on the topic and video below.